Good morning, Extraordinary Servants. Good morning, Mount Calvary. Good morning, people joining us in worship today. We're so thankful to worship with you today. I'm Pastor Will Hankey, and uh, I'll be leading us in worship today, and uh, blessed to be with you as we start a new series, When Worship Gets Weird. And uh, so we've had a lot as we journeyed through the week, seeing new county orders, and then uh, being able to figure those out and, and discover what we're going to do. The thought of opening worship, we'll go back to telling you the exciting news that we will open worship next week. Uh, but this series was all created with that in mind, that we were going to open up worship, and uh, we're going to look through a room full of masks, and then uh, people online and uh, but no doubt worship has been felt a little weird to us during this time during this wilderness season so we'll talk about that this morning uh, but exciting news that next week we'll move back into that but some some challenging things this week as we process through it we're thankful for the servants that are with us today uh, Jill who's been uh, serving as she's playing this morning and, and got our music going uh, Steve's behind our electronics making sure all the details are taken care of you're gonna see field worker Josh the the seminarians are coming back and uh, we'll have a few more that will join us as they lead worship and so field worker Josh has been with us though for a year and and we're glad to have him back over the last several weeks and he'll be reading for us so we're thankful for those extraordinary servants and then of course uh, Tom who has been leading us in music he was back this week thought the things were going to change but we're thankful for uh, Tom Kane and leading us in our, our hymns this morning with that being said let's let's begin in worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Is this your confession? If so, answer yes. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We now turn to our opening uh, song this morning. We switched our order a little bit, and so we sing our opening song. When the day of Pentecost, oh, sorry. Today's first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pam Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans, and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. 
But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence." Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of all that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. And our last reading um, comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14. Now when Jesus heard this, referring to the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away, 
to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, we have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. pray this morning as we begin and, and we talk about what does it mean when worship gets weird, how do we wrap the weird? So let's talk about that this morning. Jesus, we love you so much. And as we look into this story that uh, brings us back to that time of Pentecost, that time you promised your Holy Spirit to be in the midst of our lives, we acknowledge that it was odd and weird for the people that were there at that time as they begin to to not to go through some common things that they were used to and now your Holy Spirit was here and and while it was exciting there were some new things that caused them pause for a minute as they reflected upon what you were doing help us today as we have been in a weird wilderness season also to to see how to process that what does it teach us what can we learn from it uh, why do we react the way we do? Help us this morning as we wrap the weird. We embrace what does it mean that it's weird right now. It's different than we're used to. And, and help us, Lord, uh, to see uh, your great grace in it, Lord, that your word hasn't changed. And how we can walk through it in this journey to, to see your wonderful mercy in all of this. Be with us now in your name. Amen. So as I wrote this series, just thinking through what this wilderness season has been, how long we haven't been in worship together uh, as we prepared for it this week and then had to pull back and change. And like I said, exciting news that we'll go back to being able to, to do that next week. Uh, but just what does it mean that when, when worship gets weird, when it's not the way that it feels familiar? And so week one for us and, and for you today is wrapping the weird. And uh, so those words of W, you'll see them throughout the series. Maybe you already saw the image already, but that alliteration is to help you remember. So I used a lot of W words so that you take the series and you think, oh yeah, what was I supposed to do today? And what was I hearing today? Wrapping the weird. But really that word of embracing, how do I embrace what seems unfamiliar, what seems odd? And so that's where I just looked at what's the, what's the opposite of, of weird? What are the things that help us to, to see and to know what weird is? Why is it weird? Well, the opposite of weird is ordinary or commonplace. And, and so therefore, worship is one of those places where, yeah, it's, it's common to us. It's, it's something that we know and a familiar thing that we've been doing for a long time. I've been worshiping uh, since I was a young boy, and there were certain elements of worship that helped me to know it was worship. And, and so all of that, when that becomes funny, then I have to ask myself some questions and, and begin to say, well, this feels weird. Is this still worship? And, and so we're going to dig through how does that happen, and, and is that a good thing when it's weird, or, or is it a challenging thing? Why are all those things happening inside our hearts 
and why does it feel weird to us, odd to us, and, and why is it hard for us to embrace it? And so, first, when we look at the season of Acts, and we see this in chapter 2 in Pentecost, what's happening is called the Feast of Weeks. And that was commonplace for them. That was something they did every single year. And it was something they prepared for and, and had these weeks that they, they got ready to do and, and this feast that they were planning to have. And there were certain aspects of it, like fasting, that was a part of it. And there was also the aspect that we talk about when we explain offering to you. Now, offering has gotten mixed in with charities and all sorts of other ways that we see giving to people. But for them, offering was when they first looked at everything that they had and they took the, the first fruits and they gave them to the Lord as worship. And that was taught to them by their, their fathers and their grandfathers and all of their families before that, that this is what you did. And as we've gone through on Bible studies on Tuesdays, and we'll continue, we finished Exodus this, this week, but we'll move into Numbers. So if you want to look at those, those come out on Tuesdays mornings or Tuesday afternoons, and we get ready to, to see and see what happened during that wilderness season. And in that wilderness season, Moses taught them all about that giving and, and that first fruits and what does it mean to give to the Lord. Even though it felt like at that time, walking through a desert, they didn't have a lot, they still gave. So the Feast of Weeks is all about that. It's about giving the grain offering, a, a lamb offering, a drink offering, all the things that they have God has given them, they give them back to Him. And so they're used to this celebration. And so coming together is something that they do and, and something that we usually do, which is why worship feels weird that we haven't been able to come together. And so they're prepared for that. And so then all of a sudden, when they show up for this ordinary feast, there's tongues of fire and foreign languages that invade. When they come to this feast, the things that felt normal, ordinary, common to them are now different. And something happens inside of them. Something happens. What happens when the weird invades? What happens to us? What, why does it feel weird? Why do we react to it? Why do we push back from it? Or why do we pull away from it? Or what are the questions that happen inside of our heart? Jesus has done a lot with me lately to understand some things that happen in our mind. Some things that happen naturally that, that I don't even know about, and some of the things that happen in our reaction to it. And it's made me think a lot about what's going on in our wilderness season, about how we react to some of the common oddness of, of wearing masks or having to do other things to protect others. And, and why is it that some people easily embrace it? and other people pull back from it. And, and so I wanted to take some time today to process that because it's happening in Acts the same way that it's happening with you and I today. And, and sometimes it can get frustrating because some people uh, wrap the weird and they get, embrace the weird a lot easier and some people don't. And so what's going on? There's two kinds of parts of us that kind of exist. There's our ego, which we have heard that term commonly, and that's our outer, that's the thinking that happens all the time. That's the reaction that we have when we see things in the world, we see people, we have a certain reaction to the way it is, to what we function in daily life, our natural thinking that you can think about. And then there's our subconscious. It does all sorts of wonderful things that we don't even have to think about. I don't have to tell my heart to beat where I have to tell myself to breathe, my body naturally does that. It's a wonderful thing that I can talk about with you that Jesus has built our bodies to do. It makes them wonderful, miraculous, amazing things that they function on their own without me having to think about it. But my ego, my egoic mind, has some reactions when things get odd and weird. They begin to, to hold back and push back to some of that, to what I know is common, or what I'm comfortable with. And so in that, we, we have to look and, and, and retrain some of our subconscious to tell our ego what's going on. And, and it takes some work, it takes some processing to be able to do all that. And so first I think about a question that's kind of happened. And, and so the whole goal, of course, of the ego is just simply this. It's, it's just to, to avoid pain and, and, or, and get pleasure. And so that's kind of how the ego works. And, and it's a good thing in some ways, right? Because I don't want to touch a hot stove or walk in front of a car in the middle of a street. So my ego, its main job is to avoid that pain and pleasure. The subconscious is to navigate my body and make sure that it's working through all sorts of things. 
So what happens when something weird comes into, just like it did where the tongues of fire come in and, and the different languages come in, or people start wearing masks, and I begin to say, well, how do I function with this, and, and why is it that some people embrace it or wrap it and other people don't? And so I think back to just the beginning of, of my understanding of when I first went into some health things and I began to walk into a lunchroom and I sat there with a, the chiropractors helped me understand things. And there were a lot of things that I thought I knew about health when I walked into that. Everybody kind of takes medicine and uh, when we get sick, we just go to the doctor and they figure it out. And if they don't figure it out, then it's scary for us because we wonder what's really going on in our body because we trust medicine or the doctors to figure it out. And so thinking that it's pretty healthy and it's okay to take a pill or two here, and, and that's what I kind of would have done my whole life. Well, when I went to meet originally this chiropractor, I learned there were some different things that maybe there were some other things I could be doing to take care of my body. There were some ways that I had trained myself, even my subconscious, that I could program it to understand health in a certain way. And there were other things that, that I could learn to change that kind of thinking and help me to not react the way I did so I didn't live in fear, my ego, pain versus pleasure, that the minute that I got a symptom, something that, that didn't, I couldn't understand or couldn't feel, I changed my mindset from running and thinking, well, I have to find somebody who can figure this out, to trusting that, wait a minute, maybe, maybe God built my body to heal and that, that I should wait a minute to figure out what's going on uh, do some natural things that I know that I should be doing, like drink a bunch of water, uh, eat some, some greens, some fresh veggies, do some things that might help my body get jump-started again to combat whatever the oddness and weirdness is happening in my life. And so to learn those things, it, it kind of changes whatever we've been taught and, and maybe some of the ways that we, practice, we program the subconscious. So what's unique about here is that because we're sinful human beings, our ego, when it's trying to get pleasure versus pain, can fall into the sinful trap of what just pleases me. And our subconscious, even know that God has built it to be able to do wonderful things like make us breathe and pump our heart, we can also train it to live in fear or react in a certain way to certain things about our health or life. And so some of the people, when they're struggling with things like embracing or wrapping their minds about the real weird world of masks have trained themselves to understand things about freedom that they want to know and not be held back from from whoever knows whatever history they've studied whatever they've programmed their subconscious to be weary of the people trying to steal their freedom it's why their egoic mind their their ego on the outside wrestles with embracing the weird uh, wrapping their minds around the weird and so that happens in all sorts of areas of our life, as you can imagine, that we kind of hold back and pull back from that whenever something weird comes into our life. And so it takes some time for us to reprogram our subconscious so that our ego gets on board and, and call our ego out when, it, when it's only focused on pain and pleasure and, and, and retrain the truth that we know inside of us to be ready for that this weirdness is okay. It's an okay thing. It's, it's a, actually a good thing for us to love others by wearing these masks. And so that's, that's a fine thing. And, and so it takes some work to get there. And so we're going to talk about that today because it happens for us to also as sinful human beings that embracing and wrapping our minds around the weird takes some work again to retrain our hearts and minds about what's going on. And so for them, as they get there, and then Acts 2, there's like tongues, and these tongues equal fire in languages. Kind of amazing how God does that, right? These tongues of fire also are these languages that are happening. And so this, this imagery is for both. It fits in a way that a, a fire looks like a tongue, and also in the actual understanding that a tongue speaks a language. And so fire to them is the presence of God, and so they see this presence of God, which in some ways shouldn't be too weird, but on top of everybody's head was weird. And so they acknowledge that. But then they see languages and they hear all these languages from the tongues of men. Now Steve's going to put up an image for us and you're not going to be able to see my face anymore, which we usually put in the corner, but he's going to show an image of a map. And what I want you to see on that map is that all those different areas that they're kind of highlighted, this is from my personal Bible, 
all those different areas that are kind of highlighted in, in all those names. You can go back and look at Acts and read it later. But there, there is all these different places that these people were speaking languages from. And that's what field worker Josh read for us today. Now, we, that wasn't a time of airplanes. It wasn't a time of cars. You couldn't travel that quickly to one area. And so they come into this common place, this ordinary place of the Feast of Weeks, and all these people start speaking all these languages, and they're like, how in the world did they get here? There's no way they could have traveled this far. And so their minds have to wrap around this weirdness, and they have to understand what's going on. Instead of embracing what they know about Jesus, what they know about God, that he can do amazing things and he could have all these people speak different languages, they're instead stuck in this weirdness and they have a hard time doing it. And their egoic mind, their mind that's focused only on pain and pleasure, feels like this is odd and weird and kind of painful that they have to hear all these languages because it doesn't fit with what they're used to and it feels uncomfortable and because it, it feels uncomfortable which they relate to pain they don't like it and their subconscious hasn't been able to train again to say wait a minute what is it that I know about God instead of what they know about God is okay he's he's, he's done these things he's these things that we can count on this feast of weeks that we know and we give these offerings to God but to be ready for God to bring weirdness, to bring miraculous signs, their minds aren't ready to embrace it. And so it takes some work again to step back, and that is exactly what Peter is going to do. So Peter helps them by processing through all of this. So their first reaction, their first reaction of it being weird is, these people must have been drinking too much. And so Peter, to get into their subconscious and say, wait a minute, what do you know about these people? Would they be drinking at this time? And that's why that third hour is so important. They had to fast until 10 a.m. That's what they had to fast until this certain amount of time for the Feast of Weeks. They didn't drink. They didn't eat. So it's not even about alcohol. It's about the fact that they wouldn't have even done any of that. So outside of some hallucination from them not drinking or eating too much, there wouldn't have been this thing. And so Peter speaks into their lives. Wait a minute, guys. Remember... That, they, that, that this is only, that this is this time by 9 a.m., they wouldn't have been even drinking by then. So how could this have happened? And so he's trying to bring them back from their natural weird reaction and speak into their minds what they know, what they've imprinted on their subconscious about all they've learned about what the Feast of Weeks is. He's bringing them back in the ordinary to embrace the weird. So he says, let me tell you what's happening. Remember... He goes back into what Jesus taught them. The Spirit is being poured out. Remember that Jesus said that signs and wonders are happening. Remember that everyone who calls upon Jesus will be saved. And these are important elements of what Peter is speaking to them and what he does in his whole preaching. So he's not just preaching to them. He's bringing them back to all the truth that they knew that Jesus taught, that God taught would happen. And he's helping them to understand whatever you think is weird, that you think is causing you pain, it's really what God intended to bring. Would Jesus told you would happen, helping them to embrace it, step back from it, see their natural reaction that's on the outside, and to wrap their minds around the weird and start to see what God is really doing. That this is a great thing. Peter, Peter is helping them to wrap their minds around that weird. So what happens to us when worship gets weird? It's a similar thing. Whenever something happens that happens in worship that we're not used to, because as one of my friends said, a pastor I love so dearly just down the road, Pastor Scott Jonas said, we are always trying to create our childhood church. And why is that? Because it's ordinary for us. It's commonplace. It's what we grew up with. It's what we knew. It's just like the people here where the Feast of Weeks happened. It's what they knew would happen. And we want that same similar thing to happen. And if it doesn't, then we feel some kind of pain with it, some kind of uncommon and weirdness that we don't like and it, it bothers us and so our ego goes crazy and nuts and and reacts to it instead of saying wait a minute is this a good thing what's really happening here and so we have to ask ourselves some questions to get back to why what, what, what we can see about it why am I bothered by the weird way to worship what bothers me about this? Why, why is this? Is this something that, that is really something that's pulling away from worship? 
Is it impacting Jesus' words to me? Is it changing the way that God is, is giving his words to me by, by whatever is weird in worship, by having to watch it online, seeing people wear masks, standing six feet away from them, all those things. Is that weird? Go into other areas, touchy areas, the kind of music we're now playing, the, the way the pastor speaks, what, what he dresses. Are all those things causing problems for me and why? Are they impacting Jesus' words to me? And is it helping more people to call on the name of Jesus? Hard for us to answer those questions, right? But it, it pushes us into that place to ask if that's got Jesus' ultimate goal, where did he meet people at? Where did he meet people? He met the people that the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't like, the tax collectors and the sinners, and he sat with the people that they shouldn't be doing. He worked on the days that they said were the Sabbath and shouldn't be worked on. He challenged them to understand he was coming to all people to embrace them, to wrap even the ones that they thought were weird, and that it was important for all people to hear his message. And that's where it brings us back into that place to say, okay, to embrace all this, to embrace what first seems weird to me, is to see what Jesus could be doing in it. And so in order to do that, they have to go back and they have to read God's word. We have to go back <coughs> and we have to read God's word and say, okay, what did your word teach me? So I can retrain that subconscious, whatever has come out that's, that's a little different, so that I can speak to my ego, wait a minute, when I think that's weird, it's actually a good thing, and I can speak truth to it and, and tell myself when I see it, wait a minute, this is, this is God's word going to people in new ways. This is God's word in the wilderness reaching people. This is God's word uh, being able to impact the lives of people that we haven't been able to impact before because they are in a time where they're struggling and we're able to speak a different word to them of hope and peace and joy that we know because it's ordinary and commonplace. But in a place that's weird to them, they're, they're desperate to hear it. And so it's a time for that to be said. So David says, which is what Peter recites, so that they go back to their inner part of what they've learned and been taught. I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. For therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or will you let holy ones see corruption. You have made known to me the path of life. You will make full of the gladness with your presence. This is speaking to the weird. The weird isn't devastation. It isn't them going to hell in a handbasket, as we sometimes say when, when things get a little weird and different with worship. No, it's, in, it's, in, it's coming to the place to understand, wait a minute, okay, God is still here. Actually, these are the promises he said that he would send his spirit. And look, miraculous signs and wonders. These people who could have never traveled here are speaking languages to all people. People that need to be saved that can now hear the God's word in their own language. Oh, look what's happening. And they retrain whatever their ego thought was weird. And they speak from their inner teaching of what they've learned and they go back to reading it to say no that's not weird that's amazing look what Jesus is doing and they begin to embrace it they begin to wrap their minds around the weird and say this is a great thing what do we know about Jesus and we speak those truths to ourselves when things get weird he won the victory over sin death and the devil he won that victory. Whatever we're facing that's challenging in this world, he won that victory. He paid for you. To, he paid whatever it cost to save you. These are the things we've learned the last several weeks and gone over them. He won that victory. He paid whatever it cost to save you. And then now, what do we see? He sent his spirit for you. And it's going to get weird. It's going to get weird because there's all sorts of different things that happen in it. And that's what Jesus promised with signs and wonders and all miraculous signs. So how do I wrap my mind around the weird? We speak the truth to the subconscious. We read Jesus' promises so that they're on our heart. We read one. When we speak about our discipleship model that you can see in our website, we read one. It's an important part of worshiping, loving, reading, praying. Reading is important because it retrains whatever part of us has gone awry or in different ways or we think is weird to go again and say okay what did Jesus say about that and whatever part that the, the devil's come to try and mix up or, or cause us or a world's cause to try and mix up we reread God's word and say oh wait a minute this is the truth he said to me and it retrains us to be prepared for whatever is weird 
to challenge it, to question it, and to be ready to embrace it. And so we pray today, Jesus, help me read your word every day and trust your promises so that my sinful ego, so that, so that when my sinful ego attacks, I remember in my heart what you promised. And I'm ready to wrap my mind around the weird. The people of Acts just had to pull back for a minute. And whatever was commonplace, whatever was ordinary to them, to see what Jesus was doing. And the same thing is true for us today. Whenever, whatever is commonplace, whatever is ordinary, whatever at first feels uncomfortable and we don't like it because it causes us a little bit of pain or it's a little different from what we grew up with or it's a, a little different from what we thought worship would be, he pulls us back and says, wait a minute, are the elements of worship here? And can I go back and read all of God's truth in his word and see that what he said is happening is happening? And if so, I'm ready to wrap my mind around the weird and embrace the weird. I pray this series is a a blessing to you, even preparing for it and thinking through everything we've been through in the wilderness. It's been a blessing to me just to think and see what Jesus is doing and excited to see what he'll do next as we wrap our minds around the weird and we get ready for whatever happens in worship and we get excited for what Jesus is going to do. Lord Jesus, we just ask that you're with us today and you send us with the readiness to wrap our minds around the weird. In your name, amen. We now stand, we just speak the words of our faith together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. He third day was again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We turn to time of prayer, and so much that we can bring to the Lord today, and so many people that, that have asked. And so we just uh, first turn to a time of thanksgiving. Uh, thank you, that Lord, uh, you've been with Audrey, who gets her cast off, and um, Chris, who had a successful surgery. That's from uh, Jim Newhart. And Paula, who had a successful surgery. That's Brandy's mom. And Jan Murphy, who had a successful surgery, and Barb Tebow, who finished her treatments. We lift up those that are hurting today. We lift up the Davis family, uh, Jill's daughter's family, as they took a call to Wisconsin. And uh, Lloyd, Jill's dad, as he's facing health issues. Uh, Forrest, as he's facing balance issues. Sally, who's facing health issues. Uh, Jean, who's facing health issues. Um, Joy, who's facing health issues. Cookie, who's facing health issues. That's from Deaconess Gale. From Janie, who's in hospice care, Jim Newhart's sister. We pray for Amy, who has health issues. That's friends of the Newhart's. Anne, uh, who has health issues. That's Steve Mockle's wife. Robert, who has health uh, health issues. That's Steve Mockle's nephew. Fred, who has health issues. That's from Todd. Um, Lee, who has health issues from Beth Osick. Monica, who has health issues from Linda Kay. Uh, George, who uh, is uh, Deb Hofer's dad, who has health issues. Pamela Ray, who has health issues from Mary Campbell. Debbie, who has health issues from Judy B. Tony, who has health issues and personal struggles from Mary Dietrich. Uh, Jeff, who has personal struggles from Jan Murphy. Uh, Matt, who has personal struggles from Judy. Shelly, who has marriage struggles from Judy. Brian J., who's continued to recover from stroke. That's from Tim. And Mickey Rame, who's continued to recover from illness. That's Maisie's sister. We have a lot that are having facing cancer right now. We pray for Al, uh, Tim's uh, sister, St- Tim's uncle. Uh, we pray for Russell, who has skin cancer and job concerns. That's from Sherry. Lloyd, uh, Jill's dad. Sheila, uh, Brandy's friend. John and Glenda, that's from Tim. Uh, Jim from Tracy. Colleen, uh, Teresa, Brian L., Chris Rollins, Mary Lynn Potter, and Eddie. Uh, for those that have left, love, lost loved ones, we pray for a family of Jan who lost her battle with cancer. That's from uh, Sherry Anderson's family. 
Uh, we pray for a family of Jen. That's Heather K. Friend, who lost her sister in an accident. Uh, we pray for the Adler family on the anniversary of Loretta's passing. We lift up our nation's leaders and, and uh, Mount Calvary and, and our preschool as we prepare for reopening, our community schools, seminaries, and teachers as they prepare for fall, uh, medical personnel and first responders, uh, those out of work, and help us uh, to love our neighbors. Let's turn to Jesus in time of prayer. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful things you've done. We thank you for Audrey getting her cast off, and uh, Chris and Paula with successful surgeries, Jan with successful surgery, and Barb who's finished treatment. We lift up those that we've named before you, the Davis family, Lloyd, Forrest, Sally, Jean, Joy, Cookie, Janie, Amy, Ann, Robert, Fred, Lee, Monica, George, Pamela Ray, Debbie, Tony, Jeff, Matt, Shelley, Brian and Mickey. Be with each of them, Lord. You know the, the struggles and the challenges they're going through. Walk with them on their journey. Be with those battling cancer. This, uh, this struggle and this, this challenge and this illness that we have a hard time knowing what to do. We trust your healing hand and what your word speaks. And so we lift up Al and Russell and Lloyd and Sheila and John and Glenda and Jim and Colleen and Teresa and Brian L and Mary Lynn Potter and Eddie Hester. Lord, for those that have lost loved ones, we, we ask that they hold on to the hope that we have in you. For the family of, of Jan and the family of Jen and for the Adler family, may they be reminded and know the hope that we have in you. Lord, we lift up our nation's leaders and, and all of our leaders as you give them wisdom to know what to do in this strange and weird time. We lift up our, our church board of directors and our preschool as they prepare for, prayer for, prepare for pre reopening. We ask that you would walk with them and give them wisdom. Be with our community, our school, our seminaries, our teachers as they prepare for fall. Be with our medical personnel and first responders as those hospitals and places fill up uh, to give them wisdom to know how to help. And be with the, out of, those out of work, specifically Josh, the friend of, of Judy. Uh, may they, you provide places for them to be able to work and vocations for them to live. Help us to love our neighbors and care for those around us. Lord, we, we ask all these things and we turn to you with a prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen couple different announcements for you this morning as, as, as we close down. Uh, one, yeah, reopening. We will, we will move back to the plan we had last week. Like I said, the number 50 was the challenge for us on Monday morning. Uh, me not wanting to turn people away. I know some people say, well, other churches are doing it. And I say, you know, the challenge for us is uh, this isn't a concert. This is worship, and Jesus brought all people to worship, and, and so I want to make sure that we're able to, to have everybody who wants to worship be up here in person. Of course, online will always be provided, and so uh, I think we've worked through some creative ways to make sure that happens, no matter what happens with new county directives and guidelines. So we're working on that. Uh, so continue to pray for your board of directors, but yeah, uh, look to register this week uh, if you want to come to worship in person. You'll wear your mask. It will feel weird. Uh, but like I said, hopefully this, this message today helped you to wrap your minds around that. Cry Room Floor is complete. Looks amazing. Uh, if you do come here, you'll get to see the wonderful way uh, from what we thought will we'll only expand this little area, but it's expanded a lot. Lots of great things uh, for our, our young families to be able to worship there. And so we're thankful for that. Um, there's a COVID uh, crisis line. And so that is... Uh, there's a number you can uh, email in and find that out. It's 314-747-7492. And so uh, if you have a, a COVID issue, uh, there's a crisis for that. There's some things. We're also creating a, a COVID uh, group for some people who are, are going through this time. And so there'll be some uh, chance to just connect if you want to connect on Zoom. Deaconess Gale's working on that. Uh, if you're voting this week, yeah, opportunity to be able to vote. Lots of important things to vote on. Uh, the Brentwood Election Day also has a food drive, and so you can bring some items, peanut butter, canned soup, canned fruit, canned vegetables, canned stew, fish, beans, canned meats, 
pastas, rice, paper towels, and toilet paper. So if this is something that you want to do, be that extraordinary servant and, and care for people in that way. A wonderful thing as you get out and vote. Uh, don't worry, the polls will be safe. They have all sorts of uh, regulations to be able to do that and wear your mask and, and walk in safely to be able to do that. Um, our Wednesday morning Bible study is at 10 a.m. for Zoom. If you want to uh, do that, uh, contact Tracy or Mary Campbell uh, so you can be a part of that. Offerings, uh, we thank you for your continued giving, your faithful giving. As you hear today in the Feast of Weeks, uh, God uh, saying it's an act of worship, a wonderful act of worship to give to Him, trusting that no matter how much our world feels weird, that God has blessed us and provides for us. And so you can go to our website and donate there. Some of you asked about Amazon Smile. So I use that all the time when I purchase things. Uh, what it does is it gives a portion of uh, what you purchase uh, to Mount Calvary. It goes directly into our check checking account uh, every so often, every so quarter or so. Uh, and so some of you are asking questions about that, about where it is. You should be able to you go to www.amazonsmile and look up Mount Calvary Lutheran Church Brentwood and hopefully you'll find it. If not, then contact the office. We uh, had some people that were struggling to be able to do that. But all you do is you're just purchasing things on Amazon at www.amazonsmile and versus Am just Amazon and and that's all it is and then it registers and once you're in you're in so I go to the same page every time uh, I have it saved on my phone and I and I even I add to my cart for my app and then I go and jump on the website uh, that I've saved in my app or in my phone to be able to just purchase that way and make sure that we get some donation coming back to Mount Calvary. So that's how you do that too. So, uh, but yeah, feel free to email in questions. Uh, some of you asked about that today. And gift cards, if you know somebody hurting, uh, please let us know and we will be willing to, to reach out and care for those uh, that are hurting. With that being said, let's, let's receive the benediction and the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Ordinary people, extraordinary, extraordinary servants. servants. Now go be one.